Hi everybody and welcome to Bike Revs. Now today we're going to talk about pumps, but before I do that, let me just introduce you to the finest slip road in all of West and South West England. It's Junction 11A northbound onto the M5, and I know that sounds boring, but just watch this, a long bending turn that comes right back on itself. Good camber, excellent tarmac, no potholes or grit. Of course there could always be some oil spill but not today so just loving this bend as i do most days when i head out this way you will have noticed that it is raining but only yesterday we had brilliant sunshine and 30 degrees of heat so what's my point well in these mad fluctuations of heat you need to be especially careful to check your tire pressures check them regularly anyway uh, certainly when it's like this or you're going to end up in a right old pickle when you go around a bend like i've just been around so what should we be using to pump up our tyres? And if you're like me and want to change your own tyres, then what's the quickest way to get them inflated? Now you may have noticed from previous videos that I'm actually a bit cheap and I like a bargain. So um, I've been having a look around and sure enough I can get a 24 litre air compressor or even bigger, maybe a 50 litre for less than 100 quid. And that's the right answer. However, I've got nowhere to put one and they're not exactly convenient. So I got onto eBay and found a cheap portable compressor that claims a lot. High throughput, quick inflation, dual cylinder, heavy duty and up to 150 PSI. Well, I mean, what could possibly go wrong? So let's begin firstly at the local shell garage as a benchmark to see how quick it is to inflate a tyre. I'm lucky enough to have a large spare tyre, not the one around my middle, but off my pickup truck. And it's a big old beast, just the job to run some tests on. Interestingly, these new garage pumps, by the way, won't inflate from zero. They seem to need some sort of back pressure to activate them as a safety precaution. So the tyre is pre-filled and we will blow it up from 10 to 40 PSI and see how long that takes. Also worth noting that it's a minimum of one pound, which gives you seven minutes worth of air. Mm, I remember when these garages did it for free and you had a proper pump. Okay, so the machine's just bleeped. That means it's finished. I put all the stuff back and it took two minutes, 31 seconds. Not too bad. So let's try now with the pump, which I bought from eBay. So I'm back on the drive and I'm gonna remove the valve core in order to let all the air out. Then I'll pre-inflate it to 10 PSI. And from there, I'll pump it up to 40 using my new pump. And here it is. I'll take it out of the bag and we're gonna plug it in. It's gonna use all the bits that I've got with it. So I'm gonna use the extension hose that came with it. I'm gonna use the little adapter that allows me to plug it straight onto the battery. But there is a slight flaw in my plan with the way I'm filming this, which is that even with the fairly long cable it comes with, it doesn't actually reach around to the front of the truck so that I can clip it onto the battery. So you can see that I've moved everything around to the side of the truck where it'll reach. Here's the pump and the lead now easily goes onto the battery. So it should be a simple case of just plug everything together and um, turn on the on switch and we should be in business. Now we're going to come on to talk about this pump in a lot more detail a bit later on. I'll show you some close-up pictures of the various features that it's got. Um, what I would say, initial thoughts, feels a little bit cheap and um, it only cost me £20. So uh, it is a little bit cheap. But that's okay if it does the job, right? Anyway, here we are, connecting it up, making sure I've got a really good connection with the battery terminals, and then there's the sort of normal 12 volt plug that goes into the socket, which is an adapter, and I switch the pump on and get absolutely nothing. It's as dead as a dodo. So go back, check all my connections again, you know, that's what you've got to do. And at this point, I'm spending quite a few minutes faffing about, going between the pump and the car and trying to work out exactly what I've done wrong and um, to be honest I hadn't done anything wrong plus was on plus minus on minus everything plugged together switches on I don't need the ignition on because I'm going straight to the battery um, but nothing at all absolutely dead so what I try and do is then start wiggling some wires around which you shouldn't really need to do should you and at this point I'm really running out of ideas in fact I've tried everything including scratching my head um, but to no avail and then all of a sudden as if by magic it springs into life I've got absolutely no idea why um, but nevertheless it's working so what I'm going to do now is let it do its job it's going to pump the tire up how quick is this going to be or how long does it going to take well uh, I'm not one for waiting around I do get bored very easily as proved here so just wait for this thing to inflate and waiting and waiting a bit longer but uh, it is taking quite a while now I've only got a little analog display on here it's not a digital display but it's still fairly accurate I can see where the pressure is 
and it's not quite there yet now whilst all this is going on i'm very keen to check everything so i keep checking the pump itself to see if it's hot and i keep checking the connector now interestingly the connector got really hot and as you'll see from this clip it actually starts to smoke so i've got smoke coming out of that little 12 volt plug um now that cannot be right so i am keeping a very close eye on this uh, it's hopefully just got a bit warm and it's burning off a bit of excess and then all of a sudden for no reason whatsoever the whole thing just stops so it stopped now i know there's a thermal cutout on this pump but it, the pump itself wasn't hot it was only the connector but yeah it, it stopped so i've got to try something else now this is getting a bit ridiculous um can't really work out what's happening so what i'm going to do is unplug it from the battery because it might be that little adapter thing that's not working um and i'm going to plug it directly into the cigarette lighter socket or the 12 volt socket inside the truck and it still doesn't work like so it's not that adapter thing it must be something to do with the pump or the cable itself and i have to say that at this point i am starting to lose faith a little bit in chinese technology however a little bit more wiggling and a bit more fiddling and then all of a sudden it springs into life again <laughs> I simply can't explain why. I don't know what I touched, I don't know what I did, and I don't know why it's working again. In fact, I'm starting to believe that I've got magical hands. But we're back in business, the clock has started again, and I'm watching this go up to 40 PSI, and eventually it gets there, so we'll flick the switch off, and then I'll go over to my phone, stop that, and the time came in at... 5 minutes 27, and that doesn't include stoppage times. So that's a good 3 minutes slower than the garage pump okay so in the interest of science i've now resorted to trying it with a foot pump so once again deflated the tire got the foot pump onto the job from 10 psi that was a bit too much so i've tried the hand pump now the hand pump which i normally use for my bicycles was also fairly hopeless so back to the foot pump a few moments later i'd had enough and it had also started raining so i gave up it was five and a half minutes which is exactly the same amount of time as it took the electric pump except that i was only halfway inflated i'd got to about 20 psi so i'd only put 10 psi into it and so i decided to go off and have a look to see if there's something else i could get instead and i went to halfords and i spotted two possible contenders tenders the um, Halfords digital rapid tire inflator or the Michelin version and I actually went for the Halfords one because on the label it said that it could inflate in two minutes whereas the Michelin one claimed it in four minutes here we go with the Halfords pump then and you can see already that it's really compact but I am going to steal the little uh, 12 volt adapter so I can put it straight onto the battery so that's pretty straightforward and then what I'm going to do is take the pump out of its um, bag and to pull the cable out now you'll see it's got a fairly long cable that wraps up inside so everything about this is very neat so there's a fairly decent amount of cable like i say i plug it into the adapter and the moment i plug it in it's great news because i've got lights appear and um, the display comes up on the pump itself so i know it's going to work and then all i've got to do is flick the on switch and this just works so what a joy after the other one now all i need to do from here is pull out the hose and attach it to the valve uh, and again really straightforward and everything on this just wraps up into a nice neat package so i'm going to screw that on uh, and then i'll switch the on switch then as before what i'm going to do is pump it up to 10 psi and then i'll time it from 10 to 40 psi so this one seems to be taking a bit longer but on the plus side it hasn't stopped at any point so there we go uh, it's finished i'm going to stop the stopwatch and the scores on the doors for this one well it's a rather disappointing seven and a half minutes although as i say it was a rather faultless seven and a half minutes but let's now wrap this up Okay, let's do a summary of these little pumps then very quickly. So this is the very cheap one that I bought from eBay. Now, it's quite difficult to fit it into the bag. It's quite lumpy and bulky. And in fact, I've already broken the bag, I've just noticed. So yeah, it, is, it doesn't fold up well. And when you get the device out, um, it comes with a number of things that come with it. So obviously we've got the extension hose. Um, we've got this rather nice little adapter that allows you to plug it straight onto the battery, which as we'll explain in a moment, is very useful. Uh, a nice long cable and on the end of it um, that thing which again we'll come on to in just a moment now other features on this the handle is dreadful it's just these two really nasty rivets that hold it in place and this bar across there now that doesn't strike me as a particularly good handle i mean it, you can lift it up but it's not great folds down neatly that's the best place to leave it uh, these look like metal but in fact they're plastic the whole thing feels a little bit cheap 
Um, on the sides we've got a label which is starting to peel off. It says air compressor. It's got rather a pleasing picture of a camel, although I don't know quite why that's on there. On the other side it says double cylinder and you've got the on-off switch. So, uh, oh, and uh, other features is that we've got these nice little rubber feet, so the vibration um, is, is uh, absorbed by those. So that all seems pretty good on the surface of things. The problem with it was this thing on the end. Now, I just noticed that there's something of a, a hole there. Now, I'm pretty sure that was there when I bought the thing. Um, so it came damaged and really I should have sent it back. But um, I didn't have my glasses on at the time and I thought that that was actually part of it. And in actual fact, it probably helped ventilate it because there was some smoke coming out of this and it does get very, very hot. So now the second time I used it, there was no smoke. So perhaps it was just burning off a bit of plastic. I don't know. But what I'm going to do is chop the end of that off and then put some clips onto the wire, some of these clips. That way I can just connect it straight to the battery and I don't need this thing in the way because I think that is just not up to the job. Now other features that I've spotted on this is that um, it's actually got a current draw of a maximum amperage of 30 amps. Now I don't know what the amperage is or the fuse is on my um, 12 volt socket in my truck or on my car but 30 amps just seems rather high so this thing draws a lot of power from your battery and um, actually putting it through the, the car's wiring system or the wiring loom probably isn't a good idea. So again, attaching this one directly to the battery is the way to go. Also, you'll have spotted that uh, I had a few problems with this. When I plugged it in, um, I had to wiggle the wire around to make it move. That's never a good thing, is it? So there's all sorts of things wrong, but actually the root of most of it is that. So as I say, I'm gonna chop that off and put some clips on, and then I think this would be pretty good. So is it worth the money? Well, it wasn't too much. As I say, I uh, bought it on eBay. It was very cheap. It's going to sit in my garage. I'm definitely going to use this one when it comes to changing the tyres on my bike. And um, yeah, uh, although it's awkward to pack away and all the rest of it. Yeah, actually quite pleased with that. I'm surprised. Uh, uh, initially I wasn't, but actually, as I say, I got down to the root cause of all the problems and it's all right. Um, I'll work on that later. This thing seems to work okay as well, the extension lead by the way, and um, that, or the extension hose, uh, that is um, pretty good as well. I'm sure you could pick those up for peanuts. There's nothing much in there to go wrong. Um, it's just two wires soldered onto um, a little board that allows you to connect. I don't know what it looks like in there. I might take that apart later on. Okay, so that's that one. This one is a much neater thing altogether. So this is the Halfords pump. Um, it fits in the bag a treat. The bag hasn't broken and um, you know, you can just wrap it up. It's really tidy and obviously the pipe or the hose comes out of there and I can do the cable there and I've got all the adapters and things I need for blowing up my paddling pool and various footballs. So that was great. It's also got a light on it, which um, you can only use obviously when it's plugged in. There's no battery in it and um, it was a little bit noisier than the other one. I've got to say, so it's more noise um, and it wasn't quite as quick. But on the plus side, this doesn't get hot. You don't have to wiggle it around in order to get a connection. And it only draws 15 amps instead of 30 amps. So this is a much more sensible option. And um, this is the one that I'm going to be putting in my car and I'm going to use in case of emergencies because as I say, it does wrap up so neat and so tidy. Um, it is a much better option really for the average sort of car driver who's got a pump in case of an emergency. Um, this one on the other hand, as I say, is probably one that I'm just going to stick in the garage and use when I need it. Right, if you're still interested, let's have a quick look inside here. So, uh, specs on, nice big screwdriver. Too big, crap. There we go. And do that bit. Oh, that's just completely falling apart. The um, <laughs> the solder's not actually stuck it to the uh, connector part there, which is probably what the problem was. Um, there is no smashed piece of plastic, which I was expecting to find in there. I mean, really, that is there's not much to it, but um, I think I'm just going to chuck that out, like I say, because even if I was to fix this or put a new one on the end of it, I would still have to be drawing the current of 30 amps 
through my wiring limb on my car and I'm not really prepared to do that. So uh, there we go, let's um, get these and just cut the end off and go and order myself a set of crocodile clips. And now I'll bring you back to junction 11A, but going southbound this time. It's not quite as much fun, but it is two lanes so that I can get past these cars. Now, unfortunately, it does have two really bad bumps about halfway around it, which could definitely shake you off if you hit them with badly inflated tyres. So, as for my new pumps, I've spent 65 quid on them today, and for that, I've got a known brand which works well, packs away neatly, and is a great thing to keep in the car for emergencies, but it is slower than I'd hoped. So I've also got a cheap Chinese-made pump from eBay that inflates considerably quicker but has some questionable electrics and doesn't pack away too well. So that one will only get used with careful supervision on the driveway. I really should get that proper air compressor but what I really need is a workshop to put it in. Anyway, I'd love to hear your comments. What do you use? And until next time, keep those chains oiled and I'll see you soon.